What's going on YouTube? It's Jay Rich back again with another one and today we're talking about antennas. Two antennas versus one antenna. That's a question I get asked a lot on here. And to me, just honestly, it depends on what location you're most driving in. Let's say if you're out in the desert where it's a lot of long, straight, flat roads, Hey, two antennas will get way out there when they're properly set up. As for if you're in the mountains, a lot of hills, a lot of turns, like here in the southeast or maybe in the Rockies or something like that, I would go with the single antenna. And I'm going to explain why. Before we get too far into it, go on ahead and hit that subscribe right there in the corner. And on your way out, make sure you give me a like if you have any questions or whatever. Uh, leave me a comment below. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Uh, I don't want to talk over anybody's heads um, because generally if you're asking this question, your CB knowledge is not way up here. It's more, you know, in the middle, maybe the lower. So I'm going to do my best not to, not to get too technical with you. So two antennas. There are some requirements for two antennas. One is that you need a different coax than with a single antenna. Dual coax, dual antenna setups use 75 ohm RG59 cable. As to where a single antenna uses RG58 at 50 ohm resistance. Also something else that you have to think about for two antennas to work properly and get the optimal performance out of they need to be spaced at nine feet apart optimally they will work at six seven eight feet but to get the optimal performance and get the most out of your money you're going to want them at nine feet now on my freightliner behind me the antennas are on top of the mirror from the factory and they are right at nine feet, believe it or not. But they are way out there on the mirrors. They're at the top of the mirrors, and I'm always hitting trees and whatnot with the antennas mounted at the mirrors. That's why on the driver's side over here, I have one single antenna mounted on the mirror hoop, and it's grounded to the frame. And that's what works best for me out here where I'm at. So, I've jotted a few notes down on paper. Let's go on ahead and look at that on paper right now. All right, guys. With your single antenna system, we're going to look at the pattern here at which the signal radiates. On a single antenna system, the signal goes out evenly. Like you threw a rock into a pond or something like that, and the ripples of the water go out evenly all around. Like I said, with the coax, RG58 or RG8, 50 ohm cable. And for one single uh, antenna, you want to run 18 feet of coax. With your coax, you always want to run in three foot increments. So 18 foot is optimal for one single antenna. There are some that, uh, like a Wilson mag mount, does not have 18 feet of coax, but the antenna and the coil itself is tuned to accept the length of coax that it comes with. Now on your dual antenna system, it's called co-phased. You want them to be nine feet apart. The antenna's nine feet apart. RG59, 75 ohm coax is what you want to use. Now forgive my crude drawings here, but you have your two antennas. The radiation pattern of the antennas is more front to back of the vehicle okay while your antennas are side to side this is where you're going to hear transmit and receive more efficiently is way out in front of the vehicle or way to the back of the vehicle not so much side to side some people say it's an oval pattern some people say it's a figure eight pattern just depends on who you talk to, how it really works. I don't know because 
I can't see frequency waves. Now, with your coax, some coax systems are one plug in here, then you have 18 feet go to this side, and then 18 feet go to this side, connect to each antenna. On some trucks, you'll find that they have a Y splitter. Then there's a joint. Then there is your other length of coax that goes to the antenna. Problem with this is that you add, add these two joints here that reduce performance. What you cannot do on a dual antenna system is run a coax from your antenna, go into a T-splitter, and then into the radio. Even if you add a length of coax between, say a three foot piece or something between, and this does not work. You use super high SWRs, the ohms for the coax is, is off. It, it just does not work. So if you're gonna run a dual antenna system, you would need one of these two setups with a Y that comes together. There are plenty of people out there that make them, uh, Fire Stick and uh, I think Procom and a few others make um, systems like these. Uh, this is more of a factory setup from like Kenworth, Peterbilt, Freightliner, and this is more typical of what you find where it's all made together, uh, what you'd find at a truck stop or online, something like that. All right, guys, see, Looking at the diagram, now you get a visual of the beam pattern of, of the antennas and the frequency and stuff like that. So, there you have it, guys. I appreciate you watching. Watch more of my CB videos right here. And go ahead and subscribe for me. I appreciate you watching. I'm Jay Rich. You keep your knees in the breeze and the shiny side up. We'll be seeing you.